The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathed into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of kindness and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Joel, the second chapter. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishment. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage depart a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. And together we pray Psalm 51. Have mercy, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me and would have me no wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let me teach your ways to offenders and sinners shall be restored to you. Rescue me from bloodshed, O God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. For you take no delight in sacrifice or I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a troubled and broken heart, O God, you will not despise. The second reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, the fifth chapter. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. 
See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal, like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. grab my little cheat sheet. So as we gather together this evening, we are gathering at the end of the day of Ash Wednesday when before us throughout the day in many different places and different ways, Christians from across the nation and around the world gathered to mark and celebrate Ash Wednesday, to have ashes put on their forehead. Maybe it might have been in a train station on the way to or from work or driving through a parking lot to pick it up, or in a church in a downtown urban area or in a rural farm. People seem to gather for Ash Wednesday, even if it's nothing else throughout the rest of the year. And it seems to me it's because it strikes at a very chord deep within all of us. That need to make things right in some way. And in thinking about it, I thought, well, Ash Wednesday doesn't sit by itself. It's really that beginning of our long 40-day journey into Lent. And the prelude to that is Shrove Tuesday. 
And now Shrove Tuesday is celebrated in, in many different ways. We did it here last night in our own homes using recipes for pancakes that we made at home. And I put all the pictures that I got together into video and it's going to be really cool. But in central Pennsylvania, in the, the rural areas of Pennsylvania, they make donuts. Every little congregation makes donuts and then they sell them to each other. In New Orleans, when they could, they have the Mardi Gras. And so I got thinking about it and I shared this last night at our council meeting with the devotion. And it defines what Shrove Tuesday is. And I think it's a jumping off point to understand what we do today and what we will be doing together throughout Lent. Shrove Tuesday is the day before Ash Wednesday, and it is traditionally a day of preparation for Lent. The name Shrove is derived from the word shrive, meaning to hear someone's acknowledgement of their sins, to assure him or her of God's forgiveness, and to give appropriate spiritual device, uh, advice. The term survives today in ordinary usage in the expression short shrift. To give someone short shrift is to pay very little attention to his excuses or problems. So there was a change in the meaning there. Shrove Tuesday has a religious focus. But in contemporary society, the day is more commonly known as Pancake Day, Carnival, meaning without meat, or Mardi Gras, a French term meaning Fat Tuesday for Mardi, and Gras from fat. On the day before Ash Wednesday, a thrifty householder uses up the fats that have been kept around for cooking, but will not be used during Lent. Pancakes or donuts, if you're in central Pennsylvania, are a standard way of using up fat. And we use up the fat. We mark the day, because as we go into Ash Wednesday, we gather today kind of to be shriven. We gather today in this beginning of the season of Lent to stand before God and to acknowledge our sinfulness. To acknowledge our sinfulness and to ask for God's forgiveness. the practices of prayer and fasting and almsgiving are ways in which we dive down deep into ourselves to acknowledge that sinfulness, to acknowledge that we can't do it by ourselves and to ask God for forgiveness. One of the TV shows during the week that I like to watch because it is mindless television and doesn't require any real critical thinking and they have big machines, and you can watch the big machines do the work as gold rush. About gold miners in the Yukon Territory of Alaska. To get the gold, they have to move the overburden, sometimes 20 and 30 feet of soil, down to the bedrock where the riches are hidden and are deposited. Our journey to Lent is like that process of removing the overburden. We come today on Ash Wednesday and stand before God as we begin that Lenten journey and ask God to remove, to acknowledge our sinfulness, to forgive us, to remove that overburden of our sin, to help us discover that new life in Christ that is buried down deep. So that then on Easter Sunday, we can rise to new life through the grace of God. Refined and forgiven. A journey of 40 days that brings us to new life. Beginning with acknowledging before God our sinfulness.
friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life, and our life in Christ is renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that contends against evil and resists whatever leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. I invite you, therefore, to the discipline of Lent, self-examination and repentance, prayer and fasting, sacrificial giving and works of love, strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament. Let us continue our journey these 40 days to the great three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. our sin before God, our Creator and Redeemer. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that if we have sinned by our fault, by our own fault, by our own most grievous fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have not listened to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. We confess you, O God, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives. We confess you our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess you our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us. 
we confess to you our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. We confess to you our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. We confess to you our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Bless these ashes and those who receive them. May this sign of our mortality and penitence remind us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And now I invite those who wish to receive ashes to please step forward. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. O oh God, you call your church to be ministers of reconciliation throughout the world. Inspire your church in its proclamation of the gospel and guide its ministries to build up the body of Christ, Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you created the earth and all its inhabitants and declared that it is good. Protect mountains and valleys, animals and plants, and direct us to be good stewards of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you desire peace. Direct governments and leaders to work for the well-being of all people and raise up advocates to speak and serve on behalf of the downtrodden. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you are our hope in the midst of despair, our help in the midst of sorrow and our consolation in the midst of affliction. Grant comfort to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Dave, Doris, and others we name aloud now or remember in the silence of our hearts. And support caregivers who attend to all in need. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you are love and you call us to love one another. Accompany with your grace those journeying towards baptism 
and call us all to repentance as we prepare to celebrate Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you are our life and our salvation. We give you thanks for the righteous who have died in faith. Inspire us by their example to proclaim your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy. We entrust ourselves and all to our prayers to you. O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in deserted places as you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the waters of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with all the faithful of every time and every place, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called the people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to, to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our redeemer, you have freed us from sin and brought us into your life, reconciled us to you and restored us to the glory you intended for us. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Thanks 
Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be as the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ. And in the fullness of time, gather us with all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, O God and Creator, in voices of unending praise, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. May God bless you, that you may be a blessing to the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Go in peace, share the good news.